All right, welcome back to another edition of the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast. This is the divisional round matchup episode. And I'm Brad. And I'm Hefe. All right, so man, what a good, what a good week of football. I was not disappointed this weekend for the most part. Uh, it was it was just fun to watch all all weekend long. What's your, what's your biggest your biggest takeaway from this weekend? And there's there's certainly a couple um, in the AFC. It's got to be the Jags comeback win against the Chargers. That was incredible. You know, especially you know you've talked for weeks about this is a team that's on the rise and this and that. And I've told you that as soon as I start believing, they <laughs> crumble. And that's exactly what I thought was happening in that first half. Yeah. And and even into the second half, you know, Trevor Lawrence ends up with another interception. Um, but after that point, I mean, the Jags being able to come back in that game from 27 nothing in the first half, I mean, that was incredible. It, it was incredible. I, went, I actually uh, turned it off at halftime and went to bed. My wife's got me on this go to bed early, get up early thing. And I, now I think I can't shake it. But, you know, Al Michaels and Tony Dungy were talking about the at, at the half, the, the Colts Bucks game in 2003, the Monday night game that I, my wife went to sleep and I almost turned off, but I didn't. And I'm so glad that I didn't. Uh, and they were talking about that as I turned that off. And I said to my wife, I said, wouldn't it be crazy if they came back and won. And, and, and they did just that. But there are two things there that, that catch my attention. Uh, the first, uh, I've already said before, the, the Jags are f***ing for real. This is, this is going <laughs> to... They have what they have, they are doing right now. They're doing they. Peterson hasn't even got in. I mean, he just came in and tinkered with a few things to get the season off the ground. He hasn't even gotten waist deep in this yet. As, as an AF, as a Colts fan, it kind of sucks because what we're seeing we're seeing glimpse glimpses of a strong five to seven year run here, potentially. That's the first thing. Because they got a match made in heaven. Peter Peterson knows what to do with quarterbacks. He did it. We here all along. I thought it was you know Sirianni and 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 what's his face, but obviously it was Peterson. He's a quarterback whisperer, and now he's got a kid that they're very. I mean, this is like Peyton Manning esque. This is a kid that just can play right out of the freaking gate. Can play. The second thing is, and I want to pose this to you because I know that you you've tried you've been trying to jump on the. Chargers bandwagon and you jump off and jump back on because it can't give you a reason to stay on it. I'm going to oversimplify this. Simplify this. this is Brandon Staley's fault, but is Brandon Staley going to develop as a coach because he's young? Is he going to learn from his mistakes? He's going to get better or is he stagnant and this is going to crumble and go back the other way and they need to get rid of him? That's a great question. And what I've thought about is because, you know, you talk about the injuries for the Chargers this year. They had some serious injuries uh, that hampered, and we've talked about that plenty. But there was a first-year head coach that has had a bunch of injuries, specifically on the offensive end, and still had the best quarterback of the weekend, and that was Brian Dable and, and what he's done with the Giants. So it has to be – like. It, when you boil it down to from the coaching aspect, like you have to put a lot of that on Brandon Staley, a lot of what's happened there. Great. And, you know, the Chargers are going to charge her. You know what I mean? That That's their organization is to do exactly what they did. But, like, you, you, there there's plenty of blame to be passed around when you lose a game the way that they did. And, and that obviously starts with the head coach. So, you know, I think he will. This, you know, any coach can learn from their mistakes. He was great as a defensive coordinator. That's probably going to be the role we see him fall back into. And he goes and gets some more experience there, gets some more experience leading a group of men. And then at some point when he inevitably has great defenses again, he'll get another shot with somebody somewhere. And he has – plenty of time to be able to do that. Like you say, he's a young coach and he'll figure it out, but it just seems that the moments, the big moments, uh, he was not ready for as a head coach. Yeah. And this, and we talked about when, when Zach was with us, I, I had a problem with just hiring these young guys to just take over, which is the, you know, the, the end thing to do here. And this is the reason why 
Because if you're going to do that, you have to give them a chance to grow on the job, which comes with a risk because they may, they may never, they may get to, they, they may hit a ceiling and never get better than that. You know, I, I mean, Bill Belichick got fired by the Browns and look where he's at. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not writing Brandon Staley off. If I was an owner of the Chargers, I, I give him another run. I mean, we'd have a serious conversation. Say, look, look, dude, this is incredibly disappointing. Everybody knew that we were supposed to win. You know, this is this is this is a problem. But but I also told you that I don't see it that way. I mean, I think it, the, the, I've been saying for weeks the Jags the Jags are dangerous. They're like a snake lying in the grass, and that's exactly what they did. So I think it's twofold. Um, my personal opinion, and I'm not a big Staley fan. I, I mean, I don't dislike the guy. I just like haven't. The, there's something off about the Chargers. I've been off all year, and I, I've told you that, that, that I just can't, for some reason, I can't get into that. I would still give the guy another year. I, I think he deserves it. He's young, he's young. He's learning the game. Give him a chance, you know, to correct his mistakes. That's that's kind of the way I feel about it. So, um, speaking of coaching, kind of shift gears here. As a Dolphins fan and as a Mike McDaniels fan, uh, he completely took a shit on the field yesterday. That was bad. That was incredibly mismanaged at the end. There's no excuse on a fourth and one at the end of a game. You're trying to win and you're potentially driving. I mean, you shouldn't be in the game. You're driving. You got the confidence. All the pieces are in play. Everything's working. And and you get a delay of game because you can't get the play in on time. That's high school shit, man. That should not happen. Um, and not, not only did – did they not get that off? But I watched a replay in last night of that entire sequence. I had forgotten about the fact that they had run the play clock down, had to take a timeout. And then when they came back, the play clock got down to 14 and they pumped it back up to 25. And then it still ran down and they got to lay a game. And that is completely unacceptable. Like, especially for as well as they had done throughout that game for it to come to that moment, like, they were probably about to win that game. The way it was looking, they had the momentum, they were driving. If they don't shoot themselves in the foot that entire drive, they probably win the game. Yeah, I I, I agree. I I felt I felt I felt like I felt like they were going to do it. I, I really did. I thought this is this is not good for the bill. I mean, this is this is happening, and they completely just drove right into the bridge. Um, I don't know if you've seen McDaniel's coming on fire saying that he's not get his plays in because he's ripping ripping on his va- his vape. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. I have never seen that before. <laughs> and uh I, I don't think that had anything to, to do with not getting the play in on time, but it, it sure is funny. Uh, on the flip side of that, I I admire what McDaniels has done in Miami. Tua was eight and three as a starter. And then, you know, Teddy Two Gloves isn't, you know, I mean, you, you hope he's safe. He's not going to kill you. He's not a really good quarterback uh, anymore. I don't know that he ever was. I don't want to get into that debate. Um, and you got this, you got a rookie. I just think what they were able to do, especially yesterday with Tua being out, I I, I, I think he's a good coach. I think he's, I, I think he's doing, and, and I was, I was a Brian Flores fan. McDaniels is doing w- way better. I, I, I like what he's doing with his organization. I think they're and for that matter, Skylar Thompson yesterday. He, I mean, when you look statistically at the second half, it, it's hard to say this, but watching him play, he was a completely different quarterback in the second half than he was the first half. He, he really, he kind of shook it off. I don't know who talked to him, what they said to him. Doesn't matter. He started to get in the groove, started to have some confidence. I mean, you're playing. You're playing America's team right now. Everybody wants the Buffalo Bills to win because of what happened last week. You're in Buffalo. It's cold. You're not supposed to be there. Nobody expected you to be there. You're there by accident, and you're in the dan- the biggest game of your entire life, and the kid calmed down and started playing football. So I don't know what that means for his future. I just want to say I was impressed with him yesterday, and I don't know what they're going to do with Tua I don't, and bring in another quarterback, but Thompson may be a viable option he might be a viable option to keep around and keep looking at and see what he can do in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's definitely willing to entertain that. You know what I mean? Like if you look at his stats, like 18 of 45 looks terrible and it sounds terrible, but in context, like there were so many drop passes in that game 
which especially for the receivers, like Waddle dropped his first like four they hit off his hands. So yeah. it was it was an uncharacteristic day for the for the receivers there. So it's not all like Skyler. He was he was throwing some good balls. He threw a couple of those deep balls to Waddle. We're we're in the right place. They just had to be caught. So you know he he definitely impressed. And like I said, going into the offseason with Tua's situation, there's there's certainly going to be some conversation with what he's looked like. 